I was doing some routine diagnostics on the uh, expedition the other day and noticed some long-term fuel trim issues. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys just uh, how to get in there. So system selection, powertrain control module, We go live data. And uh, one of the ways I use the D7 is uh, on a scheduled interval. Uh, I come in and just scan just, just all this live data. I, I just look at, at all of these points on a, on a schedule. And it was in doing that that I ran into uh, long-term fuel trim now now when I first saw this uh, I don't know a few days ago uh, uh, bank one was in the 13s bank seven or bank two was in the sevens uh, those numbers have risen a little bit um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna choose both of these and combine them and uh, yeah, so we see that, that, you know, bank one is down here in the 14s, uh, bank two in the in the nines. Uh, and as we bring RPM up from idle to 1500, uh, not a whole lot of change. We bring idle up into the 3000 range. Up to 3500 range yeah so there's there's definitely something going on here um, now this is the type of thing that you'll see by routinely getting in and looking at your live data uh, this this situation is actually not going to throw codes uh, until it hits I, I think above 20 maybe even above 25 percent variance from zero so up or down um, but that that negative uh, long-term fuel trim is indicating a rich issue so we're going to walk through uh, a couple troubleshooting steps uh, to figure that out. Because the long-term fuel trims were moving together on bank one and bank two, I'm not very suspicious of oxygen sensors, but here's bank one, sensor one. It is functioning. Here's bank two, sensor one, and we have a functioning sensor. Bank one, sensor two, we expect a flat line behind the cat, and that makes it appear that the, the cat is functioning and doing its job as well. Bank two, sensor two, same condition, this looks good. Here we're looking at fuel rail pressure as measured against desired fuel rail pressure. Uh, this is tracking pretty well. Uh, we put the engine through a range of RPMs and just watch the trends there. And at no point does it look like fuel rail pressure is exceeding desired, certainly not by any uh, significant extent. So I don't think we have a pressure issue causing our richness. So we've removed our negative battery terminal as we turn our attention to the MAP sensor. Uh, manifold air pressure sensor, uh, if it's dirty, can be the source of an air fuel mixture. We've got our harness removed here. We'll take this sensor out and uh, check its cleanliness. So we do find our map sensor a bit gummed up. It's got a fair amount of material on it, uh, especially around the legs and, and the head of the sensor itself, uh, internal to this plastic body. So we're going to get this whole item cleaned up and um, see if potentially this is the issue in our air fuel mixture. We will be using this mass airflow sensor cleaner. Uh, uh, MAF sensors are very close cousins of the MAP sensors and this cleaner right here should work great at uh, getting this cleaned up and then we'll need about 20-30 minutes to dry, pop her back in and see what condition we have. This is our cleaned up sensor uh, after we've let it rest and dry. Uh, the condition looks a whole lot better than we first removed this from the manifold. So we're going to get this part reinserted and see what effect we've had on the condition. 
Back on the Xtool D7, we see immediate improvement in the long-term fuel trim. Bank 1 was in the 14s, now it's in the 10s. Bank 2 was in the 9s, now it's in the 6s. Uh, so our cleaning has had an effect on the long-term fuel trim. We will now pull up the short-term fuel trim, take a look at these numbers. And this is ideally where we want to be. The, these are tracking in the 0 to 5% range. 0 to 10% generally is considered healthy and good. Uh, I would like to see 0 to 5% uh, across the board on the long term and short term. And again, that's 0 to 5% positive or negative. A little rich, a little lean, not going too far either direction. So we're going to drive this vehicle for a couple of days, uh, come back here to long term fuel trim, and we'll keep an eye on these numbers as everything settles in with the new clean sensor and just kind of see as the ECU relearns where it's setting up. Uh, we have other sensors we can turn our attention to. Uh, we can come back to the oxygen sensor, study those a little bit more, and we have some uh, air intake sensors uh, that we can look at as well. Uh, so we'll just continue to circle around this issue until we see that long-term fuel trim uh, adjusting down to where we'd like to see it riding. Hope this is helpful to anyone who's chasing a similar type of issue, wanted to learn how to clean a map sensor, or just get a better feel for how the X-Tool D7 and other scanners uh, can really assist you in your diagnostics and maintenance.